So whenever I go out to a party or event, I usually have two goals. Number one, leave a little less depressed than I did before. That's probably why I went in the first place. I hate people, except when they're making me feel less lonely by standing in the same room as I am. That didn't make any sense. And two, and this one's a lot more chill than the depression one, uh, don't leave the party looking like a committed to form of assault. Bonus points if it doesn't look like one of the bad ones. This is gonna be a fun video. However, for this particular event that I was at at the time, I had a third goal. Leave the party with a kiss. Look, it sounds a lot less Chad once you get the context. It doesn't matter. Look, all you need to know is that I did accomplish one of those goals and that ended up being a big, 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 big mistake. Questionable hook aside, uh, let me tell you about the first kiss that I didn't want. So it's like New Year's time and I'm underage. And so knowing- Wait, underage for what? Wait, baby, what do you mean? Well, there are a lot of different underages. Underage for driving, underage for drinking, underage for- <clears throat> Uh, no, no, God, underage for drinking. Uh, uh, juice. Cause I don't know what the statute limitations are for crimes told via YouTube video. So you know what New Year's means? It's the tail end of cuffing season. And for those of you who don't know, it's the time where you get a girlfriend for the sole reason of it being cold outside. And this year I'm feeling especially lonely, uh, more than usual, because at the time I was dealing with a previous relationship that kind of fizzled out. It was really affecting me emotionally. So what better way to fix that is to just stand in a room with a bunch of people you don't know. So me, my friend, and like three of our lady friends figured we'd go to this college party on campus. One with very easy access to juice and fulfilling one of my long, long dreams of getting a New Year's kiss because maybe that will help bury the depression. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm sad. So we got the whole gang together and everyone's looking dope. We've got my homeboy, Darren, our friend, Jesse, and her two friends, Christina, and the one this story centers around, Beth. Dear God, Beth. So we arrive at the party and our group goes to town, especially Beth. Oh, Lord, Beth. Now, Beth, for some context, at least from my experience, is really the to-the-books type, real rule follower. Not really one you'd expect to drink, but it wasn't really seeming like that from this. So we're creeping closer to midnight, and everyone's trying to get their New Year's kiss together. So as we're all just kind of standing in the corner, Jesse makes an executive decision and says, okay, so we'll just do this. Christina, kiss Darren, and Beth, kiss Kurt. Hmm. Now, it's not like I disliked Beth. She seemed like a real cool girl that I knew nothing about, but something felt off about that idea. Something didn't seem right, like in my gut, about kissing her. But bump it, let's go for it anyway. I figure I'm here to get over what's her face, so everything I wanna do is to spite her. And kissing another girl, I think, oh, it makes, it's pretty high on the spiteful chart. Right above passive aggressive text, but right below slashing their tires. Like this was like the perfect green spot here. So the clock starts counting down and Beth kind of starts leaning closer to my face. And as she leans closer, sort of a spidey sense goes off in my brain. Like this, this isn't right, danger. Like something still about this isn't right. I mean, sure, I do kind of want this, but this feels wrong. But why? I've kissed a girl at a party before, but this is different. There's something way different about this. But what is it? What's up with this situation? And we kissed. See, y'all don't know this yet. I didn't know this yet, but I just made a very, 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 very poor decision. But you don't know that yet. See, let me slow this down and explain why my spidey senses were going off. Two reasons specifically. For one, juice was involved. Like, come on, this wouldn't happen in any regular circumstance. We're different people, kind of like into different stuff. She's awful good and I'm leaning like chaotic neutral right now. And weirdest of all, she was still coming after me even though I stunk. And not like metaphorically, like I'm a bad person, which is true, but literally, I, I was smelly, which is more so a product of that breakup I was talking about earlier. Like depression definitely has a smell and it smells like how you would figure it would smell. And I don't know, it feels kind of weird that one of the reasons a girl liked me is because her nose wasn't working. So in this really climactic section, let me pause real quick uh, to talk about my boys uh, over at Dollar Shave Club. See, this is really important, so let me get this off my chest. See, if y'all don't know, stress causes you to stink way more than you usually do. And the stress of my poor decisions is uh, really wafting up the room, yo. <laughs> but I'm living a fast life. I'm in college. I don't have time to be a better person 
and be clean. So the way I say it, you can either clean up your act or your body. And last time I checked, the tools to clean up your act didn't come in a box to your house, so. Not only do they have shaving materials, they got toothbrush, toothpaste, body cleanser, face cleanser, so you can keep your ass clean. Also, you can literally keep your ass clean like they have butt wipes. But Kurt, I can't afford to stay clean that often. I really hope that's not really the case. But don't worry, I got you, because Dollar Shave Club can hit you with the trial set of whatever products you want for $5. That's less than lunch. A month's worth of stuff for, for one lunch. And once you cop it, the price is dependent on what you want. So you can pick and choose and it's it's, it's your own thing. It's it better, better than Chipotle. Cleaning yourself is better than Chipotle. So get clean and let girls wanna kiss you because you smell good, not because uh, their brain literally doesn't work. So go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash Rishi and get the next best thing to cleaning off your regret. And I'd, I'd seriously appreciate it if y'all did. It really helped me out and it helps support the channel. So help me by helping you smell good and check out dollarshaveclub.com forward slash Richie. Anyways, back to the story. So the first thing, like I said, was that there was juice involved. It affects how everything is perceived and essentially makes the person drinking it like an adult toddler. And that kind of leads me to the second thing. See, let me explain this thing called consent. All right, so example. So if me and you are deciding on something and you're a normal person with regular cognitive function, you make regular good decisions. And I, um, like plain Cheerios. Clearly, I'm not a good person to trust with certain types of judgment calls. Therefore, knowing that you should understand that I'm bad at making judgment calls and not take advantage of it for your own agenda because you know I'm bad at it. Purposeful or not, it's really a form of manipulation. So, uh, what am I getting at here? See, at the beginning of the video, I said our group went to town on the juice. I wasn't a part of that group. I was the only non-juice drinker there because prior, somehow I got elected to be the DD. I drew the short straw. I kissed a girl who was drinking when I wasn't. Doing anything with someone who's been drinking juice when you have not let it be kissing or anything further or, or closer is not good. It's not it's not good. It's the bad. It's really Clearly, bad. this person isn't in the right state of mind to make these high-level decisions. Decisions like make out with random stranger, for one. Why did I do that? Not to defend myself, but I've never been in that situation before. I was always one of the toddlers, so it seemed cool. So I didn't have any, like, point of reference, I guess. But seeing it from the outside... Yeah, there was something up. And I don't know, maybe I was bitter, or maybe I just wanted to get my revenge back, but I did it anyway. And that's not okay. So, as I'm racking my brain about how bad of a person I might be, I feel a tap on my shoulder. And it's Beth, again, looking at me like she wants something. Um, what's up? So, we gotta try that again. Excuse me? Apparently, we kissed a second after midnight. Oh, oh, what a what a travesty. Oh, which makes sense because during the kiss I was going through my own head about the moral standard of kissing someone who's essentially a walking toddler. And she was proposing. So, we're just going to have to try again. Um, girl, I don't think you know how time works. If we miss the kiss, we try again 365 days from now, not 2 minutes after. I don't think that's how that works. And then almost immediately I'm back in the same situation. It's like I'm playing Fire Emblem and you hit the rewind on the time like we're back. But this time the repercussions of my last decision stay. But but still, we're, we're going to try again. Okay. See, now that I was feeling iffy about it, I was more prone to make a better decision. And that's what you'd expect, right? Right? So here's what y'all forgot. I'm the worst. I kissed her again, okay? I did it, I did it. I literally touched the stove, got burnt, and then touched it one more time just to make sure that it was the stove that burnt me. Like, what? Ah. Looking back, maybe it was a bit of peer pressure, maybe it was a bit of the moment, but I, th I think the strongest thing that made me do it was because I was still bitter about a previous situation, and this opportunity was right in front of me. Like, it was being given to me. And I guess I just wanted to one-up the person who wasn't even there by doing something that wasn't really right. I, looking back, it really is like pathetic, honestly. But after that, I don't know why, but my conscience finally started to kick in. Maybe because the kiss felt like someone like put a wet rag on my mouth. But my brain kind of like did the ping like, oh, maybe 
this is wrong so now this girl is clinging to me but not in the oh you're my good friend here's a hug way not even in the slightly preferable i'm a dead way it was the clinging to me in the hey let's go upstairs kind of way so here we are back again third time third time this time a lot more on the line now and and i'm not even gonna joke on this one and play around like with this one because i've already been pushing the line i didn't do it obviously she kind of looked disappointed and looked at me kind of upset and I, I was ready to like defend off another attack and then she immediately went to my friend oh god and that's how i knew okay she definitely doesn't know what she's doing but before i know it she has dragged him halfway up the stairs so i start working my way over there like very worried about what's about to happen because this is all in my hands i got her riled up i didn't stop this sooner this is my responsibility i have to be responsible in this situation especially as the sober person but at that moment the best thing that could have happened happened she fell down the steps. Fun rule, no one, drinking juice or not, wants to do anything after blunt force trauma. I grab the rest of our crew, throw Beth over my shoulders. Yeah, we didn't accomplish that one. It's never a good look when a 6'2 black dude is carrying anyone out of the party unconscious, let alone a 5'6 white girl, so uh, yikes. So we got back to my car and I sat her down and although she was pretty much like passed out, she kind of looked at me and said, thanks. In that moment, I really understood how this kind of thing worked and about like the mind state people are in in such an environment. And I'm glad I got to help her out. And hopefully this would make up for me being selfish back there. And then she threw up in my car. The really the moral of the story, I kind of learned how juice affects people from an outsider perspective and the levels of responsibility or rather lack thereof when you're drinking it i still kind of feel guilty for letting those kisses happen in the first place really to the day i die well there's not much to take from this other than don't be bitter and be responsible don't let someone else affect your decision making skills don't take advantage of other people god the fact that i gotta say that i'm not a bad person Oh, what's up, y'all? Really hope you liked that video. Uh, just a little fun, a little something before next week, which will be very thick. But you'll see what I mean soon. Oh, boy. If you like that video, I highly suggest check out my last video, Why I Lie to My Crushes. And you get to hear more about my poor decision-making skills. What, what, what a time. Also, do you like listening to things for extended periods of time? My voice especially? Well, you're in luck. My boys over at Jump Cut have me on for a podcast where I get to talk about uh, YouTube and doing that as a thing for money. So if you guys wanna hear about my journey and what I'm doing, uh, go check it out. They're really cool. But that's really about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all next time for a very thick video. Oh boy, I'm not excited. Peace. <laughs>